This is the second video in a two-part series showing the VOR Alpha approach into Canyonlands Airport in Utah. In the first video, we shot the approach and went down to minimums on the final approach course. Here, we're going to be doing the mist and seeing how to do a hold on a VOR approach using the G1000, especially given wind considerations. Here, we're descending to the Cat B MDA, given our speed, down to 5200 feet. One thing to notice, which we highlighted in the first video, is the large wind correction. The wind is shown as about 25 knots from left to right, which means that in order to hold the approach course of 118 degrees, we need about a 10 degree correction to the left. Once we're at the MDA, we're going to increase power and the autopilot levels us off. We set the mist approach altitude of 8700 feet, and when we're over the VOR, we go mist giving it full power and initiating a climb by pushing FLC and setting the climb speed. When we unsuspend the approach, the GPS sequences us onto the mist approach segment and we never go off autopilot here. The first step of the mist approach procedure is to climb straight ahead to 7,100 feet. It doesn't say how long we'll be in the climb, it depends on our climb performance, but as long as we can meet the standard minimum 200 feet per nautical mile climb gradient, we're protected if we maintain a straight ahead course. On the MFD, the GPS is calculating when we'll make it to 7100, as that's the point the next step of the missed approach takes effect, the left turn around towards the Moab VOR. When we get there, the left turn is initiated and we stay in the climb to 8700. Now, let's think through the hold entry and procedure. From the direction we're coming, a parallel entry makes most sense. The outbound course is 298 degrees, so that's what we'll expect to turn to after getting to the VOR. With the 10 degree wind correction needed, we'll have a heading of about 308 degrees. And you see that's what the GPS actually lays in for us, even though our track is the 298 course. After going outbound for one minute, we start getting turned around. We're going to intercept the inbound course and join the hold. How will the GPS manage the hold given this large wind drift? We learn about triple drift correction on outbound legs, but is that what the GPS will do? After passing over the VOR, we begin to make the outbound turn to the left. Typically, we make standard rate turns in IFR flying, which would put the arc here on the hash. But this turn is more shallow than that. Why? The GPS is taking the wind into account. Just like in private pilot when you do turns around a point and make shallower banks when turning into the wind, the GPS is preventing us from getting pushed too close to the inbound leg by shallowing our turn rate. This is the kind of thing we don't do in a traditional VOR hand flown without the use of GPS. Have a look at our ground track shown by the breadcrumbs on foreflight. We're following a pretty rounded racetrack pattern. No drift inwards thanks to our shallow turn rate. Now on the outbound leg, we're taught to triple our wind correction used inbound. We had a 10 degree correction inbound, so you'd expect a 30 degree outbound correction, but we're still using the 10 degree correction, flying 308 degrees to hold a course of 298. Again, the key here is the turn rates. Watch what happens when we turn inbound. This time, we're turning with the wind at our back. To prevent getting blown across the inbound course, we need to turn faster. Our turn rate is more than a standard one. This helps us swing around faster and intercept the inbound course without overshooting. And again, we roll out with the same 10 degree correction for wind. Let's compare this with how we traditionally account for wind in a hold. We'll switch the autopilot from GPS mode to heading mode and hold this same wind correction heading of 109 degrees. When we get over the VOR and it's time to turn outbound, we hold to a strict standard rate turn. It should take us one minute to make the turn to the outbound course. Because of the wind, we're getting squeezed in close to the inbound course. To counter this, we triple the wind correction. So instead of a 10 degree correction, we use 30 degrees and fly heading 328. This has the effect of causing our ground track to be lopsided. We're corrected for a pinched outbound turn by kicking out into the wind on the outbound leg. Now, when we go to turn inbound, using the same standard rate, the wind at our back is pushing us toward the inbound leg, but the extra compensation we use flying that triple drift correction cancels that out, and we should roll out right on the inbound course. It's important to understand exactly what the GPS is going to do in holds like this. If you're expecting a triple wind correction and don't see it, this is why. If you expect a standard rate turn and aren't getting it, this is why. 
Both methods accomplish the goal of having us roll out on the inbound course, but they do it differently thanks to the precision supplied by the GPS. For more great training insights, check out IFR Ground School at the link here and in the description.